Welcome to Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association. You can find us at lcar.net, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram. If you're enjoying the videos we're producing here at Elcara, please help our club out by hitting that subscribe button. Also, give us some feedback on our videos. Click the like button, share with anybody who may find it interesting, and be sure to hit the bell icon to make sure you get notified of the next video release. Hello folks, this is Chris, KY4CKP, and uh, this week's video we're going to be uh, doing a simple little build project using a Raspberry Pi uh, Model uh, 3B. This is a slightly older model, but this was uh, donated by one of our club members, uh, Clyde. We appreciate it uh, donating this to us. They're not very expensive, but it was nice. Uh, Clyde in for DFQ. And um, we've had this for a few weeks now, and uh, uh, I've, I've just kind of had it sitting on my desk, and I've been looking at it and thinking about it. Uh, I didn't know a whole lot about these initially, um, working in the IT field uh, myself and, and uh I know Brian, um, KY4BDP, uh, I've always been interested in these kinds of things. They've been out for a few years, of course, Arduino and, and Raspberry Pis and things like this. Uh, you know, great little uh, inexpensive uh, little kit computers that you can uh, to, can do things with. And, uh, and of course, they've been getting uh, stronger and stuff with the newer generations. And, uh, and so we, we got uh, gifted this uh, this board and I, I've just been trying to think about what could uh, what could we use it for in the um, in the area of amateur radio and uh, and what kind of a project could we do with it uh, at least initially anyway and uh, uh, explore a, a few options you know it's a slightly older model so it's a little bit slower a little bit less RAM uh, that's one thing you can get with the newer uh, version 4 model you can get uh, up to 4 gigs of RAM uh, on those um, but this one, it's, you know, it's got some decent capabilities, and there, there is a ton of projects you can do with these things. A lot of folks have done, uh, you know, all kinds of projects. But let's uh, scroll down for a second. We'll just look at the specs for a minute, and then we'll uh, we'll jump over and talk about the little project uh, that I decided to uh, to do with this. Uh, I'd say at least for now. Uh, so quad core, uh, a gig of RAM. Uh, the onboard hardwired uh, networking is uh, is 10100, so a little bit older, a little bit slower. Uh, it will get you, you know, online, but the wireless is is pretty much fine. Uh, once you get that going, you know, then you've got got reasonable speed there. Uh, it's got all the uh, the GPIO pins, the 40 pins there, and USB ports, and uh, you know, full size HDMI, and, and there's a ton of stuff and lots of accessories and things you can get with this. Now, the one thing I did find out is I was just connecting a um, a USB cable to this uh, from a powered hub. And it would power the unit, but I was getting the power warning, uh, especially if I was trying to do very much with this, uh, getting the little power warning indicator that comes up. Uh, it just wasn't quite enough or maybe strong enough, stable enough power through that. So I did order a dedicated um, 2 and a half amp, uh, as you can see there on the bottom line item, 2 and a half amp hour, uh, or amp uh, power supply for this, and uh, I haven't had that issue once I did that. Uh, and... Uh, and I got a few more things, as we'll see, and, and we've got some more cables and things coming to, to help uh, kind of clean up this little little project and, and little build that we've done. And and the main goal of this uh, was to just try to figure out something interesting that we could put together, uh, uh, you know, hopefully in, in sort of a kit form, put it in a, a nice little box and everything, and have it be a resource for our club. Uh, you know, it was donated by one of our club members, and I was just trying to think about something that would not only be interesting for me personally to to get into, and uh, and make maybe make uh, you know a video out of it as we see here, but uh, but but actually end up with a resource that hopefully the club could use and uh, and and club members could use and get some uh, you know some utilization out of. So that's what we're going to take a quick look at. Uh, it's not going to be a real long video. Uh, we are hoping to uh, to use this a little bit uh, here coming up in Winter Field Day in the Comms Trailer. Uh, we just have this resource, and uh, and uh, it may take us a little bit uh, of extra time to kind of finalize it as a, a an actual standalone kit, but we've got it most of the way there right now. All right, folks, as we uh, switch over to the build part of this uh, section of the video, uh, the first thing I started out with was a heat sink kit. Uh, the uh, These little boards don't ship with heat sinks to begin with, typically, but plenty of kits have those, or you can get inexpensive little heat sink kits like this. Uh, three heat sinks and a little fan, 
and so I went ahead and got this. This is a solid copper set. There's extruded aluminum with longer fins and different things. But I got this solid copper kit for the CPU, the memory, and the I think it's the wireless on the back. Um, so we've got this. This will help with the cooling a little bit. It comes with uh, thermal tape. Uh, if you really want to take the time and put on some actual uh, grease compound, you could do that as well. But I think this will uh, help with these little units. I noticed running the SDR, which is kind of a you know full-time workload, it does get fairly warm, and it would tend to push the boundaries of um, uh, the heat uh, thermal uh, throttling, uh, which I think is about 80 degrees or 80, uh, 80 degrees Celsius. Uh, so I put all three of these on here, and I did find a way to use the fan a little bit later, as you'll see. Uh, I've got it temporarily mounted right now. Uh, we'll be looking to do a more permanent mount for that uh, down the road. But this greatly helps, the fan especially greatly helps with the heat dissipation for the unit. All right, in the uh, next segment here, folks, uh, I wanted to go over a component that I purchased uh, for this little project. And this is the uh, the most expensive part of this, at least so far, and that is this little uh, touchscreen, 7-inch touchscreen uh, HDMI monitor. So it has some little feet, some little stand feet, and uh, you can mount the Raspberry Pi right to the back of this. And there's a number of these out there, different kits and things. There are definitely less expensive little monitors. You may even have some kind of a monitor if you're doing a project for yourself. Again, I wanted to keep this small, pretty low power, and kind of try to make it into a kit uh, you know, at the end of the day so that it can be uh, put in a box and, uh, and used by folks uh, and transported and, and secured. So uh, it was well packed. Uh, this was about $70, $75, somewhere in that range. It comes with a lot of cables and accessories. Some of them do, some of them don't. Uh, there's different sizes of, of uh, cases and monitors and things, uh, a little 5-inch and 7-inch and even bigger. Uh, but I went with this one. It had some pretty good uh, ratings on Amazon. I usually do Amazon. I'll, I'll do stuff through eBay, and this is or something similar to this. I'm sure is available on eBay. The main thing I tend to prefer about Amazon is the return policy is usually a little bit simpler, and shipping. You can usually get things uh, a lot faster uh, through uh, through Amazon. Not always, but usually. Uh, it's well packed. It looks like a well-made little unit, and it's working really great so far. Uh, again, it comes with a whole bunch of accessories. You can see here all kinds of cables and things and the little feet and the hardware. Um, so pretty much everything you would need, uh, power supply and, and everything else, uh, HDMI cables and so forth. So this is the kit I decided to use. Uh, it is a little bit more expensive. There are cheaper routes to go. Or again, you may even already have a monitor you want to use for something like this. But again, I wanted to, to make it low power and small and, and easy to pack and transportable. Uh, seems like a good little kit so far. It's working great. Uh, you mount the uh, Raspberry Pi right to the back. You can mount uh, Pi Zeros, Pi Threes, probably even the Pi Four, <coughs> if it has the <coughs> excuse me same mounting holes uh, that the Pi Three has here. Comes with the screws <coughs> to mount it and to mount the feet. Uh, and so here I've mounted the board. Of course, we've already got the heat sinks on there that we saw earlier, and uh, and then you can start mounting cables and things. So you'll, you'll have a connect cable that connects the screen to the Pi, and then also a cable for power to the screen, and a cable for power for the Pi. Uh, so here we can see I've got the little feet screwed on. They just screw onto the bottom sort of ears of the PCB that the uh, screen is mounted to, and uh, we'll be setting it up and, uh, and showing some testing uh, as we get into uh, wrapping up the final build of the project. So that'll be coming right up. All right, and one of the accessories I wanted to point out here is this little thin uh, HDMI ribbon cable. This comes with uh, this particular kit that I bought. Uh, it has, again, a bunch of different cables. You can see a couple more in the background there. But this little thin uh, HDMI ribbon cable, we're going to put this on the board, as you'll see in just a second, and uh, connect from the little LCD screen uh, over to the Pi. So here we can see the back. And over on the right-hand side of the picture, you can see the little flat ribbon connector. With these, if you're not used to these, just take your time, slip the little thing in there, make sure you get it captured with the little black lever there. And then it comes over to the HDMI port on the board on the left-hand side and plugs in pretty much like normal. And uh, you can put kind of a right-angle bend on that to, uh, to get that in place, which we're going to see here in this next picture. Now the ribbon cable's in place. Uh, and these work really well for these situations. 
uh, one of the few cables that is sort of perfect for the job for this. For some of these other cables, like the power cable you can see right there on the left, we're going to be getting some right angle connectors and things to, uh, to kind of clean that stuff up and some shorter cables to make it a little bit easier to uh, deal with. All right, folks, I just wanted to, uh, to show a quick picture here. I've got the fan mounted. Uh, literally, I just put a little uh, hot glue on the back edge of the HDMI connector and put it down. Uh, it's holding it okay. It's not a permanent type solution, but it does help a lot. I noticed that when running the SDR software, this is lowering the temperatures uh, probably 20 degrees. Uh, it was running about 78 uh, right on the edge of thermal. Uh, the thermal warning for the, the unit, uh, now it's running about 58, 59, somewhere in there. So it does make a big help. So we'll be doing some kind of a fan situation for this thing, but, uh, but this is on there for now at least, and uh, we'll do something a little bit more permanent down the road. And we'll wrap this up and uh, just show you some examples of some of the uh, recordings you were able to get. All right, so this is just a snapshot. Uh, this is an FM radio station I picked up, uh, one of the local ones here in town. You can see, I think, with the screenshot, it was coming through very clearly, very strong signal, uh, as we would expect from a, a commercial radio station. But due to copyright laws, I can't play the music that was playing. But you can see it was very strong signal, very clear, and uh, the little unit was receiving it just fine. All right, so just to wrap it up, folks, this was a, a real fun little project. It was really fun to finally dive into the world of Raspberry Pi and, and these types of uh, computing systems. Uh, you know, there's tons of accessories and hardware that you can buy. This is a, a very tiny example of uh, some of that stuff, even in the world of little touchscreens and things you can use with these. But it's a fun little project, and uh, this will be something that we're going to put together and have as a kit and have for the club and the club members to use. So that will be uh, available to, uh, uh, to folks and to the club pretty soon. Again, we're going to do a, a simple little field test here in Winter Field Day coming up. Uh, so that'll wrap it up. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Elcara, Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, 73.